Hello, this video is section 7.3 from the Larson book, Hypothesis Testing for the Mean Population Standard Deviation Unknown. Now back when we did confidence intervals with population standard deviation unknown, we had the t-distribution and that's exactly what we're going to use here. And let's refresh the memories on the t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. <clears throat> the original population must be normally distributed. Population standard deviation is unknown, so we'll be using uh, sample standard deviation S. Usually N is less than 30, but that's not always the case. The key deciding factor here will be that we are given the uh, sample standard deviation. And then the part about the data having to be normally distributed. So let's look at uh, our decision rules for critical values. And, and their, the, the wording and the format is exactly the same as it is for Z's. So for a left tail test, you're going to reject the hoe if the T is less than the negative T alpha, which is the critical value. On a right tail test, you're going to reject the hoe if T is greater than the positive T alpha. And for two-tailed, you're going to reject the hoe if T is less than the negative T alpha over 2, or if T is greater than positive T alpha over 2. So that format is same. Now to get these critical values, we can use the um, same you know, calculator or Excel. I, I have the T-chart there in, the, in, the, in D2L but you don't have to use it. It's in the same folder where the um, Excel files are. All right, so now here when I'm just using an example of with level significance 0.03, I just chose n equals 10. So if n equals 10, of course, that means we have nine degrees of freedom. So on the TI-84, for the left tail value, you do inverse T. It's just like when we did inverse norm uh, in the previous section. However, this has degrees of freedom with it. With inverse norm, we just would have had 0.03. All right, so 0.03, 9 degrees of freedom, negative 2.15. Um, inverse T, oh, sorry, come down here. For the right tailed, It'd be inverse T of 1 minus 0 0.03, because that way that'll guarantee you, uh, give you the positive number. But actually, if you already know what the left-tailed value is by doing this, the right-tailed will always be the positive of that. But if you're being asked a question where you only want the right-tailed, then you would just do it this way directly. I mean, unless you want to do it the other way and just make it positive, it's up to you. And then for inverse, uh, for two-tailed, we do inverse 3 of 0 0.03 divided by 2. Now, there's going to be two of two values. So this gives you the left value, the negative value. Now, there's, I could show how to calculate the other one directly. But that's really basically a waste of your time when, when you know that, okay, if that's negative 2.57, whatever, the, the other one's going to be positive 2.57, guaranteed. So there's no need for us to come up with another way to do this, get the, get the left end of it, and then you know the right end of it is just going to be the positive of that. So... Now here are the uh, commands in Excel to do it directly. <clears throat> However, you can you can get that straight from the uh, hypothesis testing calculations. You don't have to do it directly like this, but here are the commands if you want to do it directly. And what I mean by that is, let's say um, we're going to be using see this the t the, the t distribution tab right there at the bottom. So now we're on the T. So um, if you just put 0.03 right here, because you don't you don't need any other other values right now until we're actually doing a hypothesis test. And oh, you got to put I'm sorry, you got to put now here. So you put the sample size in the calculator. You have to put the degrees of freedom. I, I wrote this to where you put the sample size, and it's taking care of uh, the degrees of freedom. In fact, right there, that part where it says B7 minus 1, it's subtracting one of them. 
But anyway, long story short, there is negative 2.15. If I put 0 0.03 here, now you don't put one minus here because this is designed to already do that in the calculation. You just put 0 0.03, but you put 10 again. And you see there's the positive 2.15. And here, you should put the same thing again there again. It's taking care of all the stuff that we had to adjust in the calculator. Don't, don't put divide by 2. Just put in 0.03 because the calculation is doing that for you. 10. And then there, there are the, it gives both numbers here. Negative 2.57, positive 2.57. All right. So either way, if you only want the critical value, you just want to type that in there. That's perfect not you can use the other spreadsheet guess I didn't put the Excel commands in here but I'll show you I just did the calculator so left tailed alpha equals 0 0.10 n equals 11 that means degrees of freedom is 10 and you would reject the hoe if t is less than negative 1.3722, whatever. Here's what says right tailed, 0.01, and equals 22. And you would put 1 minus 0.01 for right tailed. If n is 22, we have 21 degrees of freedom. There's your critical value. And right tailed tests are always expressed like this. Reject the hoe if t is greater than some positive number. 2.5176 and then for 0.05 n equals 7 that means degrees of freedom is 6 so I have inverse T of 0.05 divided by 2 and then comma 6 and that gives you the negative value so you're going to reject if T is less than the negative or if T is greater than the positive in fact I think what I'll do here real quick is um, and bring that spreadsheet up and I'll put that on the right side of it and then hopefully we can see enough here yeah we can see yeah the first two columns all we need so I'm gonna do them exactly the same ones and you can see in pink there what the answers are right there I don't have to scroll back over so this is uh, 0 0.10 and then n is 11 And you see the critical value right up here, negative 1.3722. And here's the right tailed example. That one's 0 0.01. Always be careful, sometimes it's easy to get 0 0.01 and 0 0.10 a little confused just when you type it in there. I've seen students do that. And it's 22. Um, so enter. And there's the critical value right there positive 2.5176 and for the two-tailed we have level significance 0.05 and n is 7 and there they are negative 2.4469 and positive 2.4469 All right, I decided to pause the video for a minute just so I could add in those individual Excel commands, even though you saw me do it on the uh, hypothesis testing spreadsheet. So either way, that was too much space to copy in here anyway. So but you don't have to do it this way. t-test for the population mean now we're only going to perform t-tests using critical values and rejection regions although I've pretty much turned this class you know more technology based than it's ever been since I've been teaching it I'm probably going to wait another semester or two to start uh, using p-values and, and the reason why is that before I kind of did both these technologies people would you would have to have had technology 
So back in the day, if a student just had like a regular scientific calculator using the Z chart, you could get the P value for a Z test. You can't get it for a T without technology. So I didn't want to make it unfair for those students. So anyway, um, I will not be asking P values for T test, only for Z test even though you're going to see them, the technology is going to show you what they are. But I mentioned here in red that that, that doesn't stop you. You know, you can you look at the p-value and, and use it just to check, you know, decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Um, yeah, so you can, you know, it's still going to be there for you to view. But that, it, was, it was more of, like I said, an older, it would have been unfair to people. Now, like I said, I've just about turned it fully technology-based, so I guess so I'll probably redo this video again at some point and redo this section in future semesters and start including p-value questions from this section since we're using the technology, but not this time. Uh, here's the test statistic, which you're not really going to need. Um, it's very similar to the test statistic for the Z. The only difference is... Um, they have S there for the standard deviation where we use sigma in the last section. Okay, let's look at some examples here. Computer repair believes the mean repair cost for damaged computers is more than 95. So obviously we need to set up our ho and our ha. We'll identify that's the claim. Okay, so more than that just means greater than. Greater than, because it doesn't have equal, is automatically your ha, your alternative, and it pairs up with a ho of less than or equal to. So there's your hypothesis statements. With this, In this case, the claim is the alternative. All right, so you select seven randomly computers, randomly select seven computers. And the repair cost of that average was 100, and a sample standard deviation of 4250. At the point one, zero one, excuse me, level significance level, do we have enough evidence to support the repairer's claim? And then here's the, here's the assume the population is normally distributed. That's just in there to meaning that that it's valid to use the t distribution. So it's more of a kind of a formality. Technically, I mean, we have no other way to do this. At this, you know, in this course, or any, it, so. Even if it wasn't there, we would just assume it was there and, and treat it as if it was a T. But, but it's just more the formality. Um, but in, in reality, if, if somebody doing practicing statistics, if it wasn't normally distributed, they would not be able to do this. Well, you could do it, but you couldn't really rely on its accuracy. So since the if we're going to support that claim and the claim is the ha, that means we're going to reject the ho to get to that claim. You know, if we if if we're going to support it, otherwise we don't. So here I did the uh, inverse t one minus point oh one because it's a right tail test, six degrees of freedom because n is seven. And here I did the t inverse point oh one times two, comma six. It's weird that you'd multiply it by two there, but yet you do. It's correct. Um, well, you've already seen that it that it matches the calculator example. By the way, I did it up here, so you can sort of feel a little obviously feel better about the process. I wouldn't worry about the why too much. It's not important. So our decision rule: we're going to reject the hoe if our t is greater than 3.1427. So now we need to get that test statistic. So I'll go calculator first. And let's see what we have here. Stat, test, okay, the t test, right below the z test. Stats, the mu zero that we're testing against is 95. Sample means 100. Standard deviations for you. Uh, sample standard deviations 4250. Seven. And 
and this is a right tail test, which I already highlighted, but I'll go over there and highlight it again. There it is, okay. So remember, you always have to pick the correct one there. Um, well, that's for p-values, which I said I wasn't going to ask, but still, you want to do it correctly because if you want to use the p-value to help you reach a conclusion, you want to have the correct p-value there. It's going to give the right test statistic no matter what, but um, all right, so you see that output then matches right over here. So 0 0.3112 is our test statistic. I kind of drew a little picture here. So the rejection region would be any number to the right of 3.143. 0.3113 is nowhere close to being greater than that. So this is clearly going to be a fail to reject. And we're not going to support that claim because we are not rejecting the hoe. Now, like I was saying earlier about the p-value, I'm not going to ask you the p-value on these, but you can certainly use that information because here's the p-value, 0.383. And remember our decision rule for p-value. If the p-value is less than your alpha, you reject. If it's greater than alpha, you fail to reject. So um, 0.383. It's clearly greater than 0 0.01. So greater than the significance level means fail to reject. Remember, larger p-values mean we're going to fail to reject. We had that little slogan. Was it the last section or the section before? One of them says, if the p is low, then the hoe must go. So you have rejections whenever these are small numbers like 0, .00 something. All right. Fail to reject. All right, let's put all this information in Excel. And this is a right tail t test. 0 0.01. And sample mean was 100. Hypothesize mean was 95. Or, wait a minute, I think I might have that backwards. Um, yes. I have it backwards. The hypothesized mean that were uh, is let me, let me double check that again yes yeah, is 95 and the sample mean is 100 oh that's what I have okay uh, standard deviation 4250 and sample size is 7 yeah okay I had it right and didn't realize, okay, didn't realize it. Yeah, I got to be careful. I don't get those two numbers mixed up. Um, so there it is. There's the 0 .3112. There's your test statistic. And there's that critical value also. Wonderful. So that's all we're going to be doing in this section. Let's take a look at this example. Triple uh, A claims that the mean likely nightly lodging rate for a family of four traveling on vacation in Florida is at least 170, 185. Okay, at least symbolically means greater than or equal to. Now, greater than or equal to because it has equal in it makes it a hoe. So that's what uh, greater than or equal to 185, and it pairs up with less than 185. And this time the claim is the hoe. Okay, here's the mean from the sample. Here's the sample standard deviation. Is there enough evidence to reject the claim at alpha equals 0 0.05? So we need a critical value to come out with our decision rule. So it's um, uh, 0.05, I believe, was the alpha. Yes. N is 6. So we have five degrees of freedom. Um, inverse T, 0 0.05, comma, 5. Um, and then over here, negative T inverse of 0 0.05 times 2, comma, 5. Yeah, I hope this isn't too confusing. In a sense, I, I, uh, 
if you notice that the way I do this in the spreadsheet, like I said, we, I allow in. We don't have to put the degrees of freedom in there. So, But uh, with the calculator, you do. Well, actually, when you do the t-test, you don't put degrees of freedom either. Just these two, these two things require degrees of freedom. But to get the, the t-test, um, we put in n exactly as is. All right. So let's see what we have here. All right. Uh, let's drag that over a little bit. All right. Um, stat. Test, T test, stats, mu zero, we're testing against 185. Our sample means 172. Sample standard deviation is 15. And a 6. And we have a less than left tail test. So I got to highlight that one right there. There we go. See that? Calculate. And there it matches everything in the calculator box. Now this this is um, this is a little tricky, I think, maybe on the the visual with these negatives, and but that number is to the left of this number, and it falls in the rejection region. So as I said, even though I'm not going to ask you the p-value, you could kind of use it to help you here because you could look and say. Ah, this p-value of 0 0.0436, whatever, is less than 0 0.05, and that way you know it's going to be rejected. Because this could be easy to misinterpret, you know, which side that is going on. You know, you might make a mistake, and it thinks, you know, usually positive numbers people do fine, but negatives can be tricky. But it, it is to the, to the left of uh, negative 2.015, so that is the rejection zone. Um, and... So we do we do reject. So that's so you can use that p value. And all right, let's see. Let's bring this up. And this is a right tail test. So I need to be right here for right a uh, left tail left tail. I'm sorry. The last one's right tail. So we put in 0.05. Sample mean was 172, 185, sample standard deviation is 15, and sample size is 6. And over here to the left, so there's that critical value, there's the test statistic, negative 2.13, and then there's the p-value that you can use to help you. And so there it is. I think this is pretty fun. Yeah, so here's where the negatives, but I'm also mentioning the p-value. You can use that as a guide. So we, we uh, there's not evidence to support the claim. Yeah, mainly because we're, we're rejecting the claim, so we're not going to support something that we're rejecting. Let's see. Yeah, I want to do both of these. I mean... Not do every okay. I don't know. Maybe I won't do that last one before I go to the homework, but I want to do these two. Another oh yeah, because we have a there'll be another left tail, then we have a two tails. That way, all three types will be covered. Yeah, and I'll leave that other example if you feel like you need it. Example three, a local brewery distributes beer in bottles labeled 12 ounces. A government ag th agency thinks that the brewery is cheating its customers with bottles less than 12 ounces. 
That's that's not a good idea to cheat beer drinkers out of their beer. That may qualify as a hate crime. The agency selects 20 of these bottles, measures their contents, and obtains a sample mean of 11.7 ounces with a standard deviation of 0.7 ounces. Use a 0.05 level significance to test the agency's claim. Assume the population is normally distributed. The agency's claiming less than 12 ounces. Okay, less than, less than, no equal. So less than is going to be the ha, huh? which makes it, this makes it a left tail test because it pairs up with the ho of greater than or equal to. That's our claim. So if we're going to support the claim, um, then we would reject the ho. If we don't reject the ho, then we don't agree with that claim. So here you can get the critical value this way, the inverse T, 0.0519 negative 1.729 and here it's negative T inverse 0 0.05 times 2 19 there they are same number so our decision rule is to reject the hoe if T is less than negative 1.7291 and um, so now we need of course to get the test statistic So I'll kind of follow my normal pattern, you know, seeing what I seem to do. With uh, I always go calculator first. There's no, um, you know, educational reason or whatever that I do that. Um, I don't feel like oh, it's must it's it's critical that I show you the calculator first. Not true. And then the uh, sample mean is 11.7.7, sample standard deviation, n is 20, and this is a left tail test, so left tail is already highlighted, so we'll leave it there, calculate. So there's the t-test, negative 1.92 roughly, but that would fall to the left of negative 1.729, but you know, you could use the p-value again to, to double check, because you can say the p-value 0 0.035, that's less than 0 0.05, so that also verifies its reject. And I'll do Excel here in a minute, but let's look at my conclusion statement here. We do have sufficient evidence to support the agency's claim that the mean bottles amount is less than 12 ounces. So this is left tailed. That's already 0.05. 11.7 and we we're testing it against 12 sample standard deviation 0.7 sample size 20 and then there's that same test statistic negative 1.9192 whatever and there's your p-value 0.035 and there we go. And even though there's another example, the last one I'm going to show you before we go to the homework. And I believe we did this with the uh, confidence intervals also, that um, where we did one where you have individual numbers. Now this one we're going to have to type them in uh, in the homework. Uh, you know, we'll be able to dump them right in Excel. Well, obviously even if, if you're using the calculator you know you would have to type them in there's no dumping them straight to the calculator so so actually for both methods we are um, having to type them in so 
So Big Daddy claims the GPA for all UHD students is 2.8. Here's the GPAs for eight selected students at alpha equals 0.05. Is there enough evidence to reject Big Daddy's claim? Assume the population is normally distributed. So equals or is is 2.8 means equals equals is a hoe. So your claim this time is the hoe and equals always pairs up with not equal. So this is a two-tailed test. And then there are the your two critical values. But what we're going to have to do here, well let me start doing. Um, so your decision rule is going to be reject the hoe if t is less than negative 2.365, or greater than positive 2.365. Now, in the calculator, we have to go into a stat edit. Let me drag this over so I can see all the numbers get over there. There we go. Stat, edit. Now I can type over these. Since I'm putting in more numbers that are already there, but I'll just go ahead and do the clear. So 27, 3.3, 2.4, 2.6, 3.1, Three point two, two point nine, three point zero. All right, so I, I go second quit to get out of this. I go stat test t test. Now we did a conference interval like this, but we obviously used use T interval, not test, but T test. This is where you come over here and you choose data. That means data is the numbers are entered in the calculator, so it's going to do all the mean, standard deviation, and all that internally. So you see, um, we have to choose the the hypothesized value. We have to enter that. And then L1, and that, that frequency thing needs to be a 1. Okay, it's two-tailed, so I have to select the not equal. Let's see what we have. We have a T value of 0 0.907. T-test statistic. So you said a 9.1. And clearly, it doesn't fall in the rejection region, so it's clearly failed to reject. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna see if we ha hopefully we'll have one of the homework. But I'm just gonna explain this without wasting any more time of typing things in there. And this is what we had to do before with a confidence interval. So you see, I've put all the values in there. I think you'll be able to follow this, no problem. So you just do this command, assuming wherever if you're in the same cells. Obviously, I started in A1. You can't tell that here, but you can tell it here. So do the average A1 to A8. You do standard deviation from A1, standard deviation dot S for sample. And there that is. So what I did is did our two-tailed t-test. Put in 0.05. Uh, you see, so I put in that value. 2.9 goes right in here. We were hypothesize mean hypothesize means 2.8. So then put in that value for your sample standard deviation, sample size where it was eight, and then it'll take care of it. So that's the only difference for these. You have to just use the Excel commands here to get your mean standard deviation, then you can enter them in there and everything else will be fine. Clearly not reject. P-value shows you that too. 0.394 is way greater than 0 0.05. And there we have it. So we fail to reject that hoe. 
and we do not have enough evidence to reject the claim that the mean GPA is 2.8. So as we've discussed before on the wording of these conclusions, and once again, just because you know you don't reject that it is 2.8, you don't 100% love, agree with it, that you know maybe that's okay, but we just can't say it's wrong. That's the key. All right, I think it's time for some homework. All right, so I logged into the homework and got us to our section 7.3. Okay, some of these I may skip here, you know, just finding the critical value and that sort of thing. I mean, obviously good practice for you. But I want to get to the meat of the problems there where we start having some... Okay, this one looks okay. I'm just going to kind of glance through all of them. <clears throat> Probably a good idea if I do... Um, one of each kind of the left, right, and two-tailed. Yes, I, I picked these problems where none of them should be asking p-value. Oh, that there there is one asking p-value. Um, Let me look ahead here. Another one with p-value. How did I, how did I miss that? Like I said, it's probably not going to be a big deal since we are clearly using technology, but I'm tempted to delete those problems. God, they. Well, I can promise you you're not going to have p-value <coughs> on the test. I don't know how I made this mistake, but I guess since we're pretty technology-based at this point, I guess it's okay to have the p-value. Um, all right. Sorry about that, but uh, I think you're going. But it will definitely not be asked on the test. But I'm confident with these two forms of technology, it should be no problem for you. All right, this problem I'm only going to do in Excel. I apologize to the calculator users because um, I'm, I'm not going to type all those numbers into the calculator. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not trying to dictate, you know, what method you should use or anything, but... Um, I don't think well, I even have one on the test where it has individual numbers anyway, so. I mean, I'm glad I showed it. I'm glad we're doing it in the homework, you know, just for learning purposes, but I tend to leave that alone on a test. So there's 18 values. So we've got to get uh, um, these uh Average A1, A18, and STDEV dot S, A1, A18. You know what, though, actually, well, no, okay, never mind. I was going to say, you could, once you had those, you could put them in the calculator, but I guess, what's the point? You know, if you're already using Excel to do this, you might as well just finish it in Excel. So, I can't imagine you would love the calculator that much more, you know, but, um, uh, yeah, it's much easier if we do this. Well, let's go back and check. I didn't, oh, crud, I messed up here. I should have. Got rid of the sh okay. Here's what we're gonna do. That, that, that's okay. We can okay. Never. We'll be okay. It has the answers here, but I'm gonna generate the answers anyway, so we just won't get the reaffirming, you know, fantastic or good job on this one. So, all right, that's okay. Okay, mean class size for full-time faculty is fewer than 33 students. 
fewer, less than. Less than is a ha, right there. So you see it pairs up with a ho of greater than or equal to. So there's that answer. And so that means I'm going to need left tail test. So it's the top one. And let's see. 30.5. Uh, we're testing it was fewer than what 23. Uh, 33, excuse me. All right. So hypothesis means it's 33. And there were a a1 to a18. Obviously, you can count those up yourself, but there means there were 18 values. Standard deviation. You can either round this or you can just uh, do this. Um, nope, not that, not that sheet. Yeah. Now, if you copy this, and I might have shown you this before in confidence intervals, I think we did. You can copy that. Oh, I forgot to put the formula text there, but you can see, you know what they are. You can see that one right there, and the one above it's the average. Um, but when you come over here. You don't want to just hit paste. You want to hit paste values because if otherwise it'll try to copy the formula and it'll mess it up. And so there it is. So our p-value, how many decimal places? 0 0.013. So there it is, 0 0.013. Interpret the decision. Oh, yeah, we're going to reject because the p-value is 0 0.013 is less than 0 0.10 up here. So p-value less than alpha means reject. So we are definitely supporting that claim of fewer than 33 because it was the alternative. So let's see. Let's look at the wording on D and see if you're okay with that. At the 10% level of significance, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean class size for full-time faculty is fewer than 33 students. So we rejected that hoe in support of that claim of less than 33. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of this button so I can... <laughs> now I want to make sure I go back and do one uh, that has critical values in it also. Well, let me, let me show completed and I'll, I'll, I'll remove it. Oh, that one's also asking the test statistics, so that's okay too. I may do this one, but, but I thought I saw one that was critical value when I was going through this. That's what I meant to have. Was it this one? All right, this one. Okay, this is good. See, this this will give us a right tailed. Uh, credit card company claims the mean credit card debt for individuals is greater than forty seven hundred. So greater than means more than. More than will be a ha. It will pair with less than or equal to as its O. How about F? That looks right to me. You guys, I want to do one of each kind. That was the last one. It was left tail. This will be right tailed. Then we'll do make sure we do a two tailed. I saw one. Find the critical values. Okay. That's when I'll bring the calculator back into play. It's left, it's right tailed, 0 0.01, and what is n? How many do we have? What's our sample size? 36, so it'll be 35. So it'll be second distribution inverse t, 
and that's going to be 1 minus, because it's right tailed, 101 degrees of freedom, 35 and it wants three decimal places 2.438 fantastic so this is so now we're you know it's a right tail test so obviously the, it's going to be you know t greater than something so uh, it's got to be that one. Two point four three eight. Uh, one thing I didn't do. Let me come over. Um, yeah, this is. Um, the middle one that was from in the notes there, but this is a that's a right tailed. So what was ours? Point point oh one. Oh, already point oh one times two. Okay, so that's already the same. I just got to change twenty one here to thirty five. So there's a 2.438 critical value right there in the middle. Beautiful. And test statistic. All right. We'll get that. Let's do calculator end. All right. Let's see. Do calculator. Yeah, let me put this on the right side here. Stretch it out. Maybe I can see everything. Uh, let's see. And we will do a t-test here. Now we're back to stats. Uh, Mu zero, we're testing uh, against 4,700. Um, and that the ha is the claim again for this one too, the greater than. Sample mean, let's look back up here. It looks like it says 4,934. Sample standard deviation is 600. N is 36. And we have a right tail test, like so. Calculate. So the test statistic is 2.34 beautiful so we can pop this in Excel it's a right tailed alpha's .01 I know the hypothesized mean is 4,700. Yeah, I think that's 49.34. I think this is 600. Obviously, I can correct any mistakes I make here. 36. Oh, there's a test statistic 2.34. So I think I got them in there properly.
p-value there's 0.012 I guess that's what it was in the calculator yeah uh, this one's not this particular problem is not going to ask it I don't think yeah it's not all right so this uh, here's our statement if T is greater than 2.438 we reject uh, 2.34 will not be greater than 2.48 fail to reject because the test statistic is not in the rejection region excellent all right so I like the um, I like the first one there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean credit card debt is greater than 4700 beautiful now let's find us a two-tailed here and we'll uh, no, that's not too tail. This one is. Let's do us a two tail. Alrighty. An oceanographer claims the mean dive duration of a North Atlantic right whale is 11.7 minutes. Is. Is means equals. So this time the so this means our mu has to go here. Oh, we're going to pick the symbols and everything here. Isn't this fun? 11.7. And then mu. Not equal. And this time the claim. So the claim is the null hypothesis. It's the ho the equal. Look at us go. Use technology to find the p-value. Find the test statistic. Which I can do that right here. And stat. Test. T-test. 11.7. And then the sample mean said 12.4. Standard deviation 2.3. N is how many? What? 34. And this is two tailed. So I have to hit the equal, right? Not equal right there. Calculate our test statistic. It wants two decimal places, 1.7746. So I'm going to go with 1.77. Check answer. Beautiful. P value. And it wants three decimal places. 0851. I like 085. Wonderful. All right. Alpha is 0 0.10. So this is allowing you to see we can, yeah, so we can just use p value here. So 0 0.085 is less than 0 0.10. Not 0 0.01, but 0 0.10. So 0 0.085 is less than 0 0.10. That means reject. And reject, it should say, is not. Yeah, because the p-value is not greater than alpha. It's just a fancy way of saying it's less than alpha, but it means the same thing. Excellent. So, I'm, oh, oh, we're not through yet. <laughs> I did this in another video, thinking I was done. There was another part. All right. So, um, we reject, and they're claiming it equals 11.7. So, we're, we're saying there is enough evidence at the 10% level of significance to reject the claim. 
that the mean is yeah equal to so we're rejecting because the claim was the equal 11.7 we, we don't agree with that we think it's not equal to 11.7 we'll see how we did here beautiful all right that's the end of this question okay all right so with that being finished we will conclude this video for hypothesis testing for the mean population standard deviation unknown